All right, sitting in uh, Recon 1, what is the symptom? The symptom is the key's in the ignition. You go to turn it one click, two click. I'm going to turn it over, nothing. You can see I get the key completely turned over, nothing. Nothing at all. Take it out, put it back in. You can see that all the lights come on. The vehicle has all kinds of power. So uh, kind of frustrating. Um, searching on the forums, there is a ignition switch on this side right here. I got a, a special Torx bits to, to separate the steering column to access the switch. Then the switch would need to be unplugged. Then there's a tamper-proof Torx, and then the switch could come out. I do have the switch. I don't have the small tamper-proof Torx yet. I may separate this today. Uh, this is best case scenario to uh, solve this problem. If it's not that, it could also be the, the key portion, uh, the cylinder inside here for the ignition. I do not have that. I want to start with the switch. It seems to me that's the practical place to start and perhaps the easiest. The worst case scenario would be the park neutral safety switch which is an absolute disaster job uh, because that switch is located uh, above the valve body inside the transmission so i'm hoping to god it's not that i don't think it is because even when this is in park it won't start and even when i bring i bring the uh, shifter down to neutral it won't start so irrespective of the position of the park neutral safety switch it will not start so I'm really hoping that it is the ignition switch inside the steering column. Okay, so there's three screws, one right here. Then you need a long Torx 20 for this one and a long Torx 20 for this one. So three of them. And then this, this uh, column cover should separate. So I'm using this one right here for the shorter screw. And then I got a special T20 that I, that I purchased for the other two bolts. Okay, the three bolts came out, so I'm, <clears throat> you can see that I have the, uh, the steering column adjuster down. I'm just trying to separate the two pieces of plastic right here, okay? So I'm working my hands around. Looks like there's some type of little clip right there. I got to go check the other side. Okay, unfortunately, I looked through everything I had, and I'm going to try to zoom in. Right there, you see like a brass colored screw I believe it's a tamper proof and maybe even like T15 T20 I'm not sure and then you can see down on the bottom you have your traditional Jeep electrical connector with a red tab that you have to slide forward then you can then you can squeeze right here and pull this out there is a shaft that comes off the key cylinder and it keys into this thing a special way. So, so after you undo this bolt, you have to gently work this out after the electrical connection's off and kind of pull this off carefully as far as you can, not to break that shaft and then spin it out and then set up the new switch, the inside of the new switch to, ma to match this. So that's a good look at it. Unfortunately, this is as far as I can go today. Uh, you can see what the column looks like with those plastic pieces off. I had to first pull the clips and remove this first piece of plastic down here. Then I had the short screw right there and then the two long screws. Uh, this side, this side kind of separated and opened easier. The side over here was a little harder because it had to be kind of like pulled around this key cylinder piece right here. So I'm going to try to, it took me several times to get it to start to pull it out of the garage. I'm going to start it back up and get it back in the garage until the next time, uh, until I get that new tamper-proof Torx bit, which I think is coming soon. Just to look at the pieces, this was that first piece in the bottom. It has these two tabs that go in, and then it's just four of those push pin clips. So this goes underneath the steering column. This was the uh, harder piece of the two to uh, 
to get off. Obviously, I want to clean this up. You can see a lot of the dust from wind rock and so forth. There's the bottom piece. Here's the upper piece. This is where the actual long screws go in right there. Uh, this piece basically goes like this, and it, and it separated and came off pretty easy. You can see there's some tabs right there, two of them on each side. And you can see right where those those tabs go inside. Uh, not bad. I mean, this, these three pieces separated in, in the course of a minute or two. No big deal. So unfortunately, I can't get that switch off until I get a special tool. So I'm just going to try to get this thing to start again and get it backed up into the garage and just leave everything right here until I have the proper tool. Okay, it's a new day. I'm back at it. I guess we have to first... First thing we got to do is address that red tab right there. So <clears throat> you can see the tab went towards me and it unplugs nicely. So that's step one. I can move that out of the way. So what I have over here, I ordered this on Amazon. It's a uh, Torque 15 tamper. It's got a hole in the center. All right, it looks like that screw is loose at least. So it's coming out. So I'm gonna keep working that screw out, put the, uh, put the camera down so I can get a second pair of hands in there and very carefully remove that screw and then try to get that switch out of there. There's a look at the screw. It's like a brass screw. It's about three eighths to a half inch in length and Torque 15 seems to be what it is. Now, I'm looking at that. That may not have been tamper-proof now that I look at it. Looks to me like it was just regular Torx. Might have cost me a time and six bucks for, for some tamper-proof Torx bits, but it looks like it's just a regular, looks like it's just a regular Torx head, so my bad on that. All right, so the screw is out. The, electro, the electrical connection is disconnected. Obviously, this uh, column adjuster still kind of stays in the way. So, I don't know if I should uh, use a second pair of hands here. Okay. That came out. You can see that there's like a shaft in there. I need to be really careful about that. So, um, Wow, look at that. It's uh, not, not really what I expected. It's almost, looks like it might have a little bit of grease on it, but um, I'm gonna say that it looks like this piece is one type of material, then it gets really thin, almost like a, almost like the thickness of a nail. And it looks like it comes out about three quarters of an inch. So the switch is out. Now, if we look at that switch, you can see the angle of the mechanism inside. I'm going to uh, get my new switch, and I think it's essential that we get that same angle set up on the new switch. We can probably use a straight slot screwdriver and put it in there. We just want to match the two up. Then I'll have to carefully reassemble the switch. Okay, there's my new switch. I just put the date on the back of it. It's close, but you'll notice that the inside of the switch doesn't have the exact same angle. All right, once again, looking at the switch, that's the one I took off. You can see the angle. That's like, if you're looking at a clock dial, it looks like from the top to the bottom of that internal piece, it's on an angle from like two o'clock and eight o'clock on a clock. And then you look at 
you look at the new one, it's like one and seven. So I'm gonna get a screwdriver, carefully put it in there and try to rotate that and get more of a match on the precise angle of the internals of the switching mechanism. Okay, the one on the bottom is the existing. The one on the top is the new. I used the screwdriver and inserted it in there and turned it. I was kind of surprised. It turns harder than you think. So uh, hopefully we're pretty close. The next thing will be to carefully position that up in the column very carefully over this, over this extended piece, which once again, if you look at it, it's got the uh, thickness of like a 16 penny nail and it's sticking out of the, uh, the assembly there, maybe about three quarters of an inch. All right, let me just say this about putting this switch in. Now you can see it's in position, but I really had to spin it. I had to, I had to do like a clockwise spin starting up top and do almost a 360 was the only way you could actually get it in where everything lines up. So uh, kind of fought me. Took me a couple minutes just to get it right. I'm going to uh, reinstall that, that brass screw at the top and lock it in and then plug it in. Um, this is actually really critical. The Jeep is completely dead here. If this doesn't do it, I've got some really big problems. So even though this uh, seems kind of ridiculous, it's very, very stressful because the alternative is most likely a uh, park neutral safety switch inside the transmission, which is just really disheartening. So hopefully this does it. Stand by. We're going to get that screw locked into place. It's kind of tedious. There's not a lot of room. Just kind of getting it hand tight because the switch obviously needs to be locked into place. And then I'm going to... Um, Put a tiny little wrench on that Torx 15 bit and just gently just gently snug it up a little bit. Hopefully I'm hopefully I'm getting close here. Stay tuned. Alright, the switch feels tight. I just push the electrical connection connector all the way on and hit the tab. So the next big test, and obviously there's no need to put the uh, the pieces of plastic on in the shroud and so forth and until I know if this thing's going to work. So I'm hoping for the best. Okay, I'm uh, definitely nervous here. I'm not going to lie to you. This is uh, kind of key. Well, she started, I guess time will tell. It hadn't been starting at all. I mean, it was really bad, so hopefully I got this thing nipped. I mean, time will tell. I'll be uh, trying to run the Jeep a little bit more now and make sure it works every time. I'm gonna clean up some of those pieces of plastic, the trim, and uh, then very carefully get this all reinstalled. Wow, I hope we got it. This is a good sign. This is a real good sign. Electrical ignition switch. I picked it up at extremeterrain.com. I want to say it was 45 bucks. And then I, I bought a, uh, a long Torx bit to access these uh, bolts to pull the column plastic pieces off. The only mistake is I did not need a tamper-proof 15 Torx. All I needed was a regular Torx 15, so outside of that, not too bad. A little nerve-wracking uh, trying to get the switch out as well as get the switch back on because of that extension piece. It's like a nail. Uh, but at the end of the day, I got it. So hopefully that's a wrap. The bottom piece right here just took a little time to clean it up. It was all filled up with dust. But I'm going to carefully work this over the uh, column adjuster and uh, try to get this bottom piece in place and then get the top piece on and then lastly will be the plastic piece that covers this entire bottom assembly 
Okay, so I put the bottom piece on first, then the top, and you just have to carefully work it into place over the directional, as well as the ignition, and then I heard two pops, so I knew the pin snapped in. You can see the bottom piece is still off. So now I got that small screw in the center and the two, the two long ones right here on, e on either side. So I'm gonna get them in there. And then we almost got this thing all wrapped up and then I'll just take a few minutes to talk about precisely what my issue was. You know, there's plenty of videos online saying, hey, yeah, change your ignition switch, but there's various symptoms. None of them really named my symptom, which is kind of strange. So I'll talk about that. Okay, just gonna take a few minutes to talk about my symptoms. So in my case, the, um, the ignition switch about six months ago, I noticed I went to start my Jeep and it seemed like there was a one second delay, maybe a little longer. Thought it was, thought I was losing my mind. Next thing you know, it began to be more frequently. I would turn the key to the start position and there would be a second delay. Now these Jeeps have what's called tip start, which generally is once you turn the key to that third position, the start position, you can pretty much back off the key and it gives it the, the run command or the start command. So mine started to get delayed and then it got to the point where it would not start. So I started researching it. My best bet was to try changing this ignition switch. Second best bet would have been the uh, actual key cylinder piece. And then the worst case scenario, and I only found one video online of a of a guy that went that far and deep on his own was to change the neutral park safety switch, which, which had failed for this guy on a JK. And that involved removing the valve body and the solenoids out of the center of the transmission and changing a switch. It was a huge job and I was sick to my stomach thinking about that that could be it. Happily, it was this switch. So that was my symptoms. Other people online, their symptoms were they took the, the key out and it continued to beep. The chime continued to beep as if the key was still in the ignition. Uh, other people's uh, symptoms were they would be driving and the vehicle would stop all on its own. I didn't have any of those situations. Mine just simply was a delay upon start and then eventually no start. I uh, would try moving the shifter from park to neutral and try four, five, six times. The Jeep was basically dead in the garage. And I knew I had all kinds of power. I got an Odyssey battery, so I knew it was nothing like that. And the only other clue I had is a friend of mine last year. Same thing happened to his JK out on the beach. The tide was coming in. His vehicle would not start. He got it out of there in time. He thought for sure it was a bad starter. It was not the starter. He took it to a dealer. At the end of the day, it was the ignition switch. So for 45 bucks and an hour's worth of work, looks like Recon 1 is back, back up and running. All right.